Andy Kenny alone in Ireland has experience in dealing with Brexit at the level of the European Council, that's a meeting of all the heads of government in the EU, where all the crucial decisions on EU level will be taken on Brexit. He is also now alone in Ireland, uh, got experience in dealing with Donald Trump, president of a country that has a large impact on Irish affairs. Given these experiences, should he be allowed to remain in office up to and including the general election if necessary, irrespective of the ambitions of Leo Varadkar and Simon Coveney? Or does the musical chairs tradition of Irish politics again take precedence over the national interest? Also tonight, we'll discuss the case of Parik Shaler, who went to the US in 2013 on a J-1 visa on a summer break, having done a degree in Irish and history at Trinity College Dublin and was involved in a terrible road accident which has left him with serious intellectual and physical handicaps. His devoted parents are with us tonight, Reinhold Scherer and Patricia O'Byrne, to discuss their frustrations in getting adequate care for their son. With us on the main panel tonight will be Lisa Chambers, Fianna Fáil TD for Mayo, Rory Hearn, social policy researcher, Harry McGee, political correspondent of the Irish Times, and Breed Smith, people for profit. Uh, for Dublin South Central. We made a lot of efforts to get any uh, TD uh, from Fine Gael to take part in the programme this evening, but uh, unsurprisingly, none were available. Shane Beatty will be dealing with the uh, text, tweets and emails. If you'd like to comment on the programme, your text is to 53131, place to tonight before our comment, or send us a tweet at hash from B, or email us, email us at tonight at tv3.ie. We start with um, Patricia O'Byrne and Reinhold Scherler. <coughs> and Patricia, tell us a bit about uh, Parik before he had the accident. He was just finished the degree in Trinity. Yeah, he had just finished his degree and he was, he was a lover of Irish language and that's where he saw his future in Irish media, promoting the language. He was also very athletic. He was a swimmer, at competitive swimmer at national level and he was just full of hopes, ready to start out in his life. and. He head off on a J-1 visa and three weeks later then he had this sort of got this devastating catastrophic brain injury when he was hit by a van that was trying to overtake him at 10 o'clock in the morning. He was, on, he was on a bicycle. He was on a bicycle and he was cycling to work, yeah, and the van tried to overtake him and it didn't work. He was hit and he was then taken to hospital in Cape Cod and operated on, but he was... In, in very bad. Well, he actually only had one injury, his brain injury, uh, but it was a very serious brain injury and they expected him to die, but he he was lingering on. I read how they got it, they were talking about um, his organs being available for donation uh, at the time they gave him such little hope of, of survival. Yeah, it, it was it was really frightening. I mean, it, it, it's, it's, uh, it was something that you know, we, we didn't really believe until until we got there, and when we got there, we, we it, it still we, we we were not living in in reality, um, and it was so severe that they that they were talking about organ donation um, several times. They were talking about an intolerable life that he was going to lead lead, and you know they were asking us whether we really wanted to uh, him to you know him who was a very very active person um, whether we wanted him to lead this intolerable life you know, um, and uh, we got really really scared because um, you know we we had you know yeah we, we, we were desperate um, at that stage yeah. but obviously he survived and you brought him back to Ireland and you're caring for him now um, what care does he have and what care does he need well basically we, most people in his condition I should say don't get the opportunity to go home because in Ireland what happens is these people are they just put in nursing homes that's what's done with them where that are totally ill-equipped I mean to deal with people with um, severe brain injuries but we actually we we got a home package to bring him home but the home package covers care like sort of washing him dressing him but I mean his needs are far greater than that he needs physiotherapy, he needs therapy, I mean, to stop his body contracting, I mean, therapy that isn't available to him in the community, therapy that we we pay for ourselves because it just, it, it's not provided. Um, there's no occupational therapy. And really his, his life is confined to a room. I mean, there's, there's no centres for people like that. There is no place where he can go. I always think the example of my own mother who was 
in her late 80s. I mean, they were sending ambulances and picking her up, bringing her out to day centres. There is absolutely nothing like that for somebody with a severe acquired brain injury. If you're born like that, yes, there are places like the CRC where that do um, yeah. bring these people out, but there is nothing. You introduced me to him, and he seemed to be conscious. He, he seemed to know what was going on. Oh, yeah, he understands. I mean, the, 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 the important thing is we, we started to learn about all this when it happened, mm -hmm. uh, and we, we, we realised that we had to learn about you know, how to deal with the situation and how to help him, because what we saw and what we saw in, in the acute hospital was that, and, and when, what we heard from, from consultants that we talked to was that in the system, um, in the health system, there isn't really much hope given uh, to the families and, 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 and to the individuals with, with a severe acquired brain injury. And what we learned is that, you know, 40% mm -hmm. internationally, the, the, the national study that, that, that shows that 40% of, um, of people with you know, severe brain injuries are wrongly diagnosed as, as, as being in a, in a vegetative state and not getting out of this. Uh, in, in Ireland, there's a study that, that shows that 60% are wrongly diagnosed as being in a vegetative state. And mm -hmm. what that means for those people is that they're basically locked away in a room. Um, they're not giving any help because any help given to them would be a waste of resources, uh, which is something that we have been told. And, uh, and, and there's no hope given to those people who are conscious, like Park. And Park is the living example that you know, somebody, even with a very severe brain injury, who was you know, meant to die really, um, got over this and out of it and is now communicating with us. He's not, not talking, but he, you know, he understands what's going on around him. He's going to concerts. He told us using a bleeper that he's enjoying life, you know, that he has difficult moments like everybody else has. But, you know, it, it just showed to us that this is not the end of the line and that is why how it is so important. How does he use the bleeper? How, how does he do that? Uh, Oh. The bleeper. Yeah, a bleeper, it's, he has a, his left foot. His left foot is a part he's total control over. So like one bleep for yes, two for no, three for I don't know. Or he can pick out options. You give a list of things. Uh, like he's able to, he, he voted. You call out the names and he bleeps when you come to the one he wants. So there is that type of communication. He also has a, a gadget now, a screen, and we're hoping this... Um, what's the name of it? A, a Toby, Toby Dynabox. A Toby Dynabox, mm -hmm. that this screen will help him. Uh, to communicate again, it's using his phone. Can he watch films and television, for instance, and understand them? Yeah. No, oh, he watches the news. I mean, he yeah. followed the uh, elections in, yeah, in, in America. You know, he's yeah, he, he's quite well up and, on. And that he found it right. quite entertaining. <laughs> yeah, with Trump, yeah. he's very. You know, he, he was always very interested in mm. politics, and he hasn't. His personality, the personality, doesn't change. It's that's still there. He, he still finds funny. He, he went to vote for in, in the last election. And voted yeah. exactly as he would have voted before. That those things don't change, but it's just it's like being locked in. He can't express really. Okay. Anyway. What does he need? What does he need from state services? Well, what he what he needs and other people in his position need, and the people that are locked away, you know, staring at the at, at the ceiling uh, and, and and being conscious uh, and wrongly being diagnosed as not as not being conscious is. Is, is medical care, is proper diagnosis that is not available. Um, like in the, in the NRH, for example, there's no neurologist. You know, they have no modern equipment uh, to, to do tests on people. Um, they need, you know, he needs therapy and he needs a social environment that helps mm -hmm. him to enjoy his life. And, and, mm -hmm. and that, is, that is not something that is, is meant to be there for people like in, in, in Ireland. Mm -hmm. What uh, response have you got from the HSE and other agencies when you've asked for these services? Well, initially very little. Um, and then we thought, well, what are we going to do about it? And, and, and what we decided to do is to, to propose a, a pilot project to to learn about how services should be, what kind of services should be delivered to, to people like him and, um, and to build up the expertise to do that in, you know, in, a, in, in a very structured way. And so we, we, we set up the Unsail Foundation together with friends and we proposed a three-year pilot project that has been accepted by the HSE and that has been announced by Minister Simon Harris. But it's just a, an indication of the disconnection within the HSE and with, with the public really and, and with, with those people that, that need their services that although everybody agrees that this should happen it's taking months and months and months and nothing happens you know, nothing, there's, there's very very little progress really uh, is being made I, I'm sure you've made contact with other uh, parents who've, whose children have suffered similar mm -hmm. accidents and disabilities um, how many s such people are there in Ireland as far as you know? 
it is, it is impossible to get figures for these people because a lot of them never get to the NRH. They, you know, they're, they're considered the too National bad. National Rehabilitation. Mm, uh, yeah, the National Rehabilitation Hospital. They're considered sort of, you know, lost cases. Lost yeah. cases. Yeah. So they're put into nursing homes, and we have tried. It's it's just very hard to to get figures. I mean, there aren't huge numbers of them. And that, that is really something, you know, that so to, to help those people uh, would not require hundreds of millions of, of euro. You know, it's something that is really mm -hmm. doable. It's something where the HSE could say, well, look here, you know, we're not just the agency that every day is in the news for another scandal. You know, there's, there's something that we can do and we can make a positive contribution. And that's why we propose this project. And we're mm -hmm. doing that together with other families that we have met along the way. And there is, you know, there, 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 there are many in Dublin and then there are, there, there are others uh, across Galway, the country. Yeah, there's scattered Galway, Wexford, Longford, Wexford, 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 Longford. Yeah, mm, Monaghan. Monaghan yeah. Okay, if after, say, six months or so, you're not getting anywhere on this, come back and tell us what, what's happening. Yeah, well, you're left thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a break now after the break. We'll talk about Indy Kenny. Join us, guys. And Biggie, tell us about the texts and tweets. Yeah, well, a huge outpouring of uh, support for Reinhardt and Pat there and the very powerful interview that they gave. Uh, someone tweeted in to say what wonderful advocates they are for their son and for all those with severe acquired brain injuries in Ireland. And someone else says as well, it's so tragic that young people with severe acquired brain injuries have to end up in some cases in nursing homes in this country. Uh, Moira described them as the un some of the unsung heroes of Ireland and she hopes that the HSE gets a copy of that particular interview. Uh, and a couple of people are saying this, which really it does. It puts life into perspective and things into perspective. Uh, Trina tweeted to say that there was a neuro rehab strategy that was published in 2011. But Trina says that uh, there's no doubt that's gathering dust in some sort of cabinet somewhere. And finally, someone says uh, that every week we're hearing of failings within the health service in Ireland, but our government would rather uh, not fund the HSE properly and not take money from Apple tax, etc. A lot of people getting exercised about Enda Kenny too, but we'll let your panel talk about that first. Uh, and don't forget to use the hashtag VinB if you want to get involved in the show.